Hopefully you can see this. I have about, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 feet of line on Rosie. I had 50 feet, but I got it tangled up, had to cut it a little bit. And a couple problems that I have with Rosie are that I can't. I guess it's a good problem to have, but I can't get her far enough away from me to teach her to come because <laughs> I trained her. Okay, maybe overtrained her when she was a puppy. So it. I can't get her. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's see if this will do it. That's pretty good right there. That's good. What I'm trying to do is create some distance and then make. Okay. Rosie, come! Good girl. No treat, of course. Just a little bit of loving. A little bit of loving. A little bit of loving. <laughs> I've had such a hard time with being able to get far enough away from this dog to actually put a proper come command on her. I mean, look at this. Oh, there's her line dragging back there. Uh, and she's a high drive border collie and what happens is when she goes into herding mode which is you know if she, she's out with my other dogs or um, it's just the dogs really she doesn't bother the chickens or anything but um, if she's going around and around and around my dogs and herding them and I'm calling her she's too far gone in that mode to listen and I haven't been able to put a a proper C-O-M-E command on her because I can never get far enough away from her to do the pressure and release. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess, and I don't like to call a dog out of a stay. I would never do that. To me, stay means I'm coming back for you. I'm going to come back and touch you. I'm going to come back and get you. So uh, what I wanted her to do is wander off away from me so that I could put a little pressure on her and call her back. But this is what happens when you overtrain your dog. I guess it's a good thing, but... <laughs> uh, there's her line. Goes the neighbor off to work. Get about one car a day up our road. Um, yeah, so. Okay, see if I can. See, I can't even sl sneak off away from her. <laughs> it is a good problem to have, but I think I'm going to need somebody to hold her for me and then call her and use the pressure and release because she. See, I don't want to say S-T-A-Y, but if she just happens to S-T-A-Y, I can wander off and leave her, but... So, you know, this is a, a dog that has been completely trained with no treats. You probably saw her puppy videos, her table training videos, her pressure and release videos, and I did a lot of that with these Border Collies when they were puppies. And now I'm paying the price because I can't get her to be distracted. When she's on the leash, she just will not be distracted. And so, yes, that's a good thing. Unless you need them to be distracted so you can teach them something. Maybe we'll find a ball out here. Let's see about that. Because she's so hypersensitive to the line, I'm going to... There we go. Take her out of it a little bit with some ball play. But see how she she stops and lies down and then if I called her she would just hoard the ball she doesn't know what come means because she hasn't been taught it formally so now I can pick up the line from all the way across the yard Rosie come good girl good good 
good and there's the ball. The other thing when you're training it is you never want to call them unless you can make them do it. So she's laying out there with the ball. I'll come pick up the long line. Rosie, come. Rosie, come. It's a little tangled around her, but Rosie, come. Rosie, come. The girl. So see, I don't care that it got tangled around her because the relief from that was her coming to me. So I'm not going to run down there. Oh, I got to untangle my dog. Does that even reinforce the come even more? Because that's how she got out of that mess. Rosie, come. Good girl. So I just gave her a little tiny pop on the leash when I said come that sort of jumped her towards me and then let her come back on a loose leash so there's no pulling. And my criteria for come is that I have to be able to touch their collar. I don't care if they sit, stand, or lie down. So that was pretty good. Okay, what I'm going to do since I can't get her off of me, is I'll just show you a really easy hack for stay. Now you'll notice I just have a flat collar on her. She's very sensitive, stay. And yeah, and that's why I'm not gonna do this with a, with a slip collar because she would choke herself. Never tie your dog up with a slip collar, my friend. So she's just hooked to the fence. Go back, good stay. Good stay. It's just a flat collar, and um, that way she doesn't tighten down a slip leap. Never tie your dog up with a slip leap. Stay. And I'll just go back to her. Good stay. Stay. Okay, I pushed her over towards the fence a little bit to take the slack out of it. I mean, to take the tension out of it. So I don't want her to rely on the tension to help her stay. Good stay. So stay always means I'm coming back to you to get you. It never, never call a dog out of a stay. You teach them wait for that. Stay. She's starting to get, <laughs> get the idea. And the good thing about having them tied like this is you're not doing the, you know, Stay, 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 garbage. They're not going anywhere, so you just stay and walk away. And I, ordinarily, I wouldn't back away. I'm backing away so you can, so I can film it, but I would turn my back and walk away, maybe 10 feet or so, and come right back. Good stay. Good stay. Stay. stay and cut the jibber jabber okay here's what you're not going to do stay oh good girl rosie oh you're such a good girl oh yes yes oh you're such a good girl oh oh because they don't speak english or whatever language you speak you're trying to teach them a command stay And the fastest way to have a dog that breaks is stay is try to teach this with treats. So don't do that. All right. We'll change our location. Oh, she's dragging behind. You know, she's very light on the leash. So we're going to stop here and work on stay some more. I'll make the line a little bit longer. And I don't really tie it. I just wrap it in case of an emergency. All right. Stay. Now I'm going to push her against the fence. See how she's like, okay, that was better. I'd like the line a little bit looser. So I'm going to give her a little bit more line. There. See how there's a little... You don't want to tie them and have there be this tension because they're going to rely on the stay. They're going to rely on the tension. So you're not just tying them up tight and having them lean into the tension because they're not learning anything. See, this is impulse control 
and self-control and self holding themselves like with horses they call it self-carriage when the horse is carrying itself and you're not carrying it in your hands to so see this is nice and loose but it's a little reminder stay I'm also using a hand signal All right Come back to your dog that's in a stay and love on it. No treats. If you have treats on you, all that dog can think about is getting to you for those treats. You know, build a bond with your dog. Build a relationship. Get that dog to work for you, not for those treats. Stay. See, she started to go, and the line stopped her. good stay. I, I train my dogs very calmly and quietly. None of that, oh God, you've seen it. Those people do that for views. They're not teaching dogs anything. Stay. Plenty of distractions around because that's life, right? Life is full of distractions. I always train my dogs with distractions, not you know, unless I have a real big problem or somebody else's dog that has a big problem, I might start in a more distraction-free environment, but I quickly get out to distractions because guess what? That's real life. Okay. So you kind of get the idea about the stay. Flat collar or rolled leather collar. No slip lead. You've got a, a line that's not super tight. It's only wrapped. For emergency, you can get it off of there real quick. Stay. If the dog lays on the line, just put a little slack in the line or back the dog up. Good stay. I want you to notice the attention that I have on this dog. I never, I don't use treats. When I move, she moves. I have her full attention. Doesn't mean they have to be staring in your face all the time. You know. So I know, when I know that when I move and she moves, I have her attention. When I stop and she stops, I have her attention. No tree. I don't care if she looks around. If I move, she's going to move. She doesn't have to be staring up at me, giving herself a crook in her neck. So Rosie's coming along nicely. Uh, we start up a lot of work in the fall. We have some work in the summer, but mostly in the fall. So I spend the summer training her now that she's a year old and Brandy too. And then they'll start working in the fall. But they have to have a solid come. You know, any dog will chase Canada geese pretty much. People, oh, my dog would do that. Oh, my dachshund would do that. Oh, my terrier would do that. Okay, would it do it on the side of a highway? 15 feet off the highway and not get out in the road? Would it come instantly when you call it? Would it stop instantly when you call it? Would it not grab the geese? They can't touch them. They have to move them. So it's a job for a border collie brainiac. But before I can get them out there on those corporate properties, they have to have a solid come and a solid stay. So thanks for watching.